Good evening, Mono County, and welcome to the COVID Community Conversation for December 3rd, 2020. My name is Brian Wheeler from Public Health, and I'm joined by panelists from the county and from the town of Mammoth Lakes. And um, we're here to give you the most recent information. Um, there have been some changes, obviously, very recently, and we anticipate there's going to be a lot of questions. So you might as well go might as well go ahead and have Stu start with the slides. Stu? Thank you, Brian. Yeah, been a busy uh, day, been a busy week, been a busy uh, few months. So let us begin. This is the community conversation for December 3rd, 2020. What we'd like to do is to make sure our Spanish speakers uh, are receiving this in Spanish. Uh, you can follow the instructions on the screen and we recommend that you click on the interpretation logo on the uh, platform. You can also watch the meeting live on the Mona County Health Department Facebook page. Again, follow those instructions on the page and we'll welcome you to the meeting. Again, just want to remind the uh, community of the uh, fire resources available for the Mountain View Fire. You can see we have the Mountain View Fire portal. That's the URL right there. And then we also have the newly um, formed and updated Mountain View Fire Resources and Recovery Facebook page. Again, very uh, comprehensive and updated information there for uh, support and um, residents of Walker. Again, stay safe to stay open is our hashtag. Um, we need to ensure that we're doing everything we can at this point now more than ever uh, to educate ourselves, friends, families, and visitors to stay open. Um, no indoor gatherings are permitted in Mono County. We continue to reiterate this. And again, you must wear your face covering when outdoors and closer than six feet from persons who are not members of your immediate household unit. These are some of the new graphics that we're providing and distributing throughout the community. Again, for the businesses, we have these available on the business resource page. And again, if you see these on our social media page, please share and please adhere to them. Thank you. Let's just get into the graphics that we have available on the portal. Again, this is under the case stats page. We have removed the 260 cases from Pickle Meadows, the Marine Training Warfare Center. And that was based off the recent success, successful adjudication request. So we're currently at 317 cases as of this afternoon. Again, this is a real time graph. It changes frequently. So if it's not updated to the actual number, we apologize. But again, currently as of uh, 2 p.m. today, we're at 317. We break down the cases by region. You can see here 253 in Mammoth Lakes, 39 in North County, and we have 25 in South or East uh, County areas. Again, you can see we've removed the base cases, which was previously 260. We track uh, positive cases by week, and we also track them by onset date and result date. What we're uh, showing you here this evening uh, both those case rates, we track the onset date. Uh, that's the orange graph. And you can see on this graph, we've tested 1,200 people in 30 days. 92 were positive with a positivity rate of 7.67%. And this was from the period from November 1st through November 28. This is also displayed in the positivity rate by week. Again, these are by... Uh, the uh, positivity rates that you can see there from 11.1 to 11.7 and so forth. You can see we've moved from 9.49, 6.25, 8.12 to 7.05% as of November 25. Currently the hospital status is green. This does change, however, when we get most recently into a new graph we've put on the portal to show you the seven day metrics. These are very alarming, very disturbing. Uh, case rates that we're seeing throughout the community, uh, certainly demonstrating widespread transmission. So our seven day metrics, you can see here, um, well, yesterday there was 23 positive cases, uh, but overall through the seven days tested 284, 53 were positive with a positive positivity rate of 18.66%. So that's a, a drastic increase in a seven day period. 
that uh, led us to, um, on December 1st, being notified or reassigned to T1 or the what's, what's called the most restrictive widespread purple tier of the blueprint for a safer economy. Metrics that were used to determine this um, from the state was our case rate of 37.9. You can see here on the bottom of the slide, due to the small county framework, we're allowed up to 35 cases per week. So we eclipse that uh, by 2.9 per 100,000. And our positivity rate during that period of time was 9.5%. And you can see here the maximum positivity rate is eight. So we were reassigned on December 1st to tier one or purple tier. What does this mean for Mono County? This uh, just gives you a couple of slides here to show you what it means for businesses indoors with modifications, anywhere from hair salons, offices, personal care services, retail, uh, particularly there is dropped to 25% from 50% and grocery stores are now limited to 50% capacity. Hotels and lodging, no change there, but again, just want to remind everybody that the town uh, order for lodging occupancy is a maximum of 70% for both hotels and for condominiums. And there's other requirements as described in the order. Uh, for those businesses operating outdoors or what you can as a business operate in an outdoor environment is restaurants. So restaurants are now prohibited from any indoor dining. Uh, wineries and tasting rooms are the same, outdoors only, bars and breweries. You can see if you do offer food uh, you're classified as a restaurant and you can open outdoor. So you can only now do takeout or delivery. Uh, the other change here is uh, gyms are now closed, family entertainment centers, and then pools, spas, and jacuzzis remain closed. The state imposed a limited stay at home order effective for those counties in the widespread or purple tier. And this basically says that all gatherings with members of other households and all activities conducted outside the residence, lodging or temporary accommodation with members of other households must cease between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And there are some exceptions to that. The state also recently updated their travel advisory. This was as of November 30, and that's really encouraging Californians to stay home or in their region uh, which means not driving more than two to three hours from your place of residence. Uh, again, they're also requesting Californians to avoid non-essential travel to other states or countries. And you should practice self-quarantine for 14 days after arrival if you've been out of the state. This information is available on the California website and you can see the link there is on the bottom. So today, at noon, if everybody watched, the governor uh, was announcing the regional stay at home order. We have a few slides here. I do want to um, just express, um, you know, the a challenge with putting all this information together, um, the challenge trying to provide all the answers, I'm sure, to the many questions. So please be patient with us. Please understand that we are receiving this information as well in this uh, short period of time, and we'll do our very best this evening to answer the questions that you do have, but we will make uh, a huge effort to get you as much information as we can uh, over the next coming days. Uh, but what it means is the regional state home order would be in effect for three weeks. Uh, it allows access only for uh, critical services and uh, still allows outdoor activities. And again, this is to limit or help stop the surge and prevent the overwhelming regional ICU capacity that the state is dealing with. What does that mean for us? It means that regions where ICU capacity falls below 15% are placed in the stay at home order for a minimum of three weeks. We are in the Southern California region. You can see there on the, on the map on the right. So we're part of you know, Los Angeles, Riverside, San Bernardino, San Diego. Um, this would be assessed on a weekly basis after an initial three week period. Currently, the ICU capacity for the Southern California region is 20.6%. Uh, this information is publicly available and that is the link to that address. And on the top right hand corner of the slide is the URL or the website, you can gather that information. What it means is all essential, non, all, sorry, non-essential travel uh, will be temporarily restricted. 
Uh, sectors that can remain open include critical infrastructure, schools that are already open, non-urgent medical and dental care and childcare and pre-K. Sectors that will be temporarily closed when a region is placed into the stay at home order. This is kind of regionally. Uh, these activities you can see on the screen. I don't need to kind of read them all off. Again, this information is available on the COVID-19, covid.ca.gov website. This slide here is uh, very busy, gets a little bit small, we apologize. Again, these sectors will have additional modifications and that's anywhere from outdoor recreational facilities. Uh, this references, uh, say, mammoth ski resorts. Um, they can still operate, but they're restricted to those exemptions, those restrictions there. Uh, for instance, mammoth ice rink can still operate, but however, overnight stays at campgrounds will not be permitted. Retail is restricted to 20% capacity. Uh, shopping centers, you can see a restriction there as well. Hotels and lodging would be only for critical infrastructure support only. Restaurants, uh, same as the purple tier, offices, places of worship and entertainment. Again, we got this information today, so we're doing the very best we can uh, to get the information that you need to operate or better understand how your business can operate during a regional stay-at-home order. Uh, with that, we'll just move on to testing. This is our testing schedule for the week of December 7th. You can see here, Public Health will have testing back in Mammoth Lakes from Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Verily is moving to Sierra Star Golf Course on uh, every Tuesday for the foreseeable future. And we still have testing up in the Antelope Valley on Verily as well. Uh, the state issued guidance for campgrounds, ski operators and outdoor recreation. Um, businesses in all, the, in this, in, in all uh, businesses in these industries are open across all tiers. Um, local health departments can have more restrictive criteria. The guidance is not intended for special events. You can see there as well. And I'd like to acknowledge Mammoth Resorts because I believe they're operating with stricter guidance than what's indicated and provided here in this uh, state industry guidance. Uh, next bilingual community conversation at this time is Thursday, December 17th. If there is a need and desire from the community to um, increase the frequency and schedule one next week, we will certainly do so. But at this time, it's December 17th at 530 this is the local COVID-19 information and resources available to you. I just wanna draw your attention to the brief or kind of the COVID-19 newsletter that is distributed now every Tuesday and Friday. Uh, and you can subscribe to receive that on the portal right there at the top of the, the portal. Subscribe uh, with your email address and you'll receive that every Tuesday and Friday. It's a really good newsletter, good snapshot of what's happened uh, in the previous week and what you can look ahead to in the future for your business, community, neighborhood, or your town. With that, Brian, I will end the presentation and hand it back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stu. All right, I'm sure there are a lot of questions out there tonight, so we might as well get right into it. Can we have our first question, please? Are we seeing cases coming from the ski area? Uh, the, the short answer to that is yes, but we are seeing cases coming from all areas, all communities, basically, and all industries. If more people that did not have COVID get tested, would there be a more accurate and lower positivity rate? Dr. Boo, can you take that one for me? Yes. I, yeah, I mean, the, the, um, the positivity rate in Mono, just as um, in anywhere else, is, is not um, representative of, of the, um, the incidence or prevalence of the, of the infection in the, in the general population. It's people who, you know, um, get tested for whatever reason. So, so, yes. Thank you, Dr. Boo. Next question, please. Who is going to enforce the limited stay at home and social gathering orders in our county and town? Sheriff Braun, how are you tonight? I'm fine, thank you. So uh, it's gonna be enforced the way that we've been doing this since March when we started doing this. We're going to rely on people to behave and do what they have been asked to do. 
We're not going to be the mask police. We're not going to be the social gathering police. We will respond to calls as necessary. But think of it as if you saw somebody driving down the street not wearing their seatbelt, are you going to are you going to call us and expect us to come for that? We we expect people to do what they're supposed to do. We will respond and uh, educate and inform and ask for voluntary compliance. And like I've always said, we're probably not going to arrest somebody for not wearing a mask. We're going to arrest them for being a jerk about it, for not leaving a store, for causing a scene, for fighting with somebody. That's what the arrest is going to come from. Thank you, Ingrid. Um, and uh, Chief Davis, would you like to uh, address that question as well? You're on mute, Chief. Yeah, I'll echo what the sheriff said, and uh, you know exactly the same type of enforcement that we've been doing all along. Um, and you know, as much as I'm around this town, I'm not seeing hardly any violation. In fact, I can't remember the last time I've seen a violation where somebody's not masking up in in one of the stores or post office uh, anywhere. So, um, fortunately, I think a lot of people are just complying all all the way around. Thank you, Chief. And why don't we take our next question? Are we supposed to be operating in the limited stay at home order guidelines as of today? And if not, when? Uh, let me see. Chief uh, Freebold, are you able to answer that one? So we've been into the uh, purple tier uh, conditions for a few days now. The limited stay at home order um, also came out a few days ago. I don't have the exact one, uh, the exact date in front of me. Um, so those are already in place. The uh, regional stay at home order uh, that's triggered by the positivity rate or the rather the ICU bed capacity falling below 15%. Um, our region has not uh, passed that yet. Um, I'll have Dr. Boo address that in a little more detail. Uh, but once we, uh, do pass that, then we would have to put those uh, restrictions in place. Yes. Uh, Dr. Boo, you were looking at some of those uh, positivity rates for the different regions. If you can maybe summarize those and give us any idea of uh, trajectory or kind of where you see those going. Yeah, um, thanks, Frank. And thanks for the question. You know, um, and, and it's actually um, quite confusing the different terminology. So, so um, when, when Frank re referred to and what the state refers to as the limited stay at home order, you know, that's what people have been calling the curfew and that does apply in the purple tier and, and that that simply means that uh, um, gatherings of people from more than one household outside a, a residence are, are prohibited between 10 p.m and i think 5 a.m and so so that's in effect but the regional stay at home order um it actually goes into officially goes into effect at something weird like 12 59 p.m on saturday december 5th um, but um, apparently no um, region in the state currently um, qualifies, has met the threshold of, of having less than 15% 15 per, 15 or less of their ICU beds available. But our region, which includes, you know, LA and, and um, Orange County and Riverside and San Bernardino, um, we're at 20.6 percent as Stu said and um, we're projected to hit 15 percent very soon um, we could be um, one of the first county first regions to uh, be subject to the regional stay-at-home order thank you dr boo can we please have our next question Is there any way for Mono County to be moved outside of the Southern California region and or receive an adjunction for a we, we kind of lost half the question there. You went on mute. Oh, sorry about that. Is there a way for Mono County to be moved outside of the Southern California region and or receive an adjudication for our county? Who would like to field that one? I'll take an initial run at it. Uh, the I'm not aware of an adjudication process um, under the, the conditions that the governor laid out today. 
we probably have forgotten about it, but when we started into the uh, tier system, um, the governor and Dr. Golly made it clear that they had left room for uh, what they called an emergency break. If at any point um, in the future, and I know we've forgotten about all of this, but um, they did foresee a situation where we could have you know, rapid increases and they reserved the right to um, apply public health mitigation measures if they felt they were necessary. Um, and so uh, given, you know, and if anybody's watching the news, it's not just Monroe County, it's not just region six or California. Um, you know, this started a while back in Europe and made its way here and it's moving through in waves. Um, so the, uh, the basis for the emergency breaks um, have been there all along. We just recently got to that, got to that point. Thank you, Chief. And I, I don't believe there's a way to for us to move out of the uh, Southern California region, unless anyone else on the panel thinks differently. No, I would. Yeah, I would just echo that. I, um, the this, uh, the state is extremely concerned. This is a very grave situation. I mean, it's, it's really an emergency, you know, atmosphere in in in, in the capital and and uh, you know in public health and. Uh, um, I, I don't think there would be any openness right at this moment to, uh, you know, for exceptions or, or things like that. And one one thing to recall, and I know it's it's maybe not a popular thought, but we do know that the bulk of our tourism or drive market does come from the region that we're associated with. So um, if we're going to be um, open, that 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 situation is most likely going to be the one that we would experience here. So uh, I know that it's frustrating. Um, uh, but that is where a lot of our, our interaction is going to be outside of the, uh, the local residents. Thank you, Chief Freebolt, and thank you, Dr. Boo. Can we have our next question, please? So in the event of a regional stay-at-home order, MMSA will remain open for outdoor ski operations, but non-essential, including ski vacation travel, is banned for three weeks. Is that correct? How does the regional stay at home order impact lodging. Dan, can you address that for me? Yes, uh, yeah, the ski operations can continue. They are open, they are operating under the current guidelines uh, effectively. effectively. Uh, the purple tier element applies to that. Uh, if and when, if we get into the uh, uh, stay at home order, uh, lodging will be impacted. Uh, the lodging would have for essential uh, workers only, uh, essential purposes for that perspective. So in that case, you would not have uh, ski vacations would not be something that uh, would be allowed with through the lodging properties. Uh, and then it would be a, uh, a call by the uh, Mammoth Mountain Ski Area to continue to operate. Uh, they, they have that opportunity that, so they could continue to operate through that process under the, under the guidelines that uh, they're currently operating under. Thank you, Dan. We have our next question. John's Pizza Works was shut down for a third time and yet reopened this week. Why isn't there more of a punishment, so to speak, for a business that is clearly not compliant? Who'd like to take a, this question? I'll take that one. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Rob. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think you know our goal is not punishment; is actually compliance um, with with what is going on, um, it, what we're seeing. We we go into those establishments. I think that you know, we shut we shut them down. Walk through a very specific and consistent list of things that we are looking for improvements on, and if they were able to achieve those, then they open. In this particular case, there was um, the ability to open to go only, uh, and this was. Again, prior to um, um, prior to going to a purple tier where that's all there was available, um, but that's that's what we elected to do based upon the circumstances we saw within the restaurant and what was available. So again, our, our approach with any bun is not going to be how to inflict pain or punishment; it's how to gain compliance and uh, how to work through the process so that we have a better community and, and uh, business organizations. So uh, that's that was our goal, and that's what we achieved. Thank you very much, Rob. Can we have our next question? Brian, before you, before you do that, we had a request that 
if we would uh, remind people how to dial in and listen in Spanish, uh, we've had people join the call who aren't sure how to uh, uh, dive into the uh, Spanish uh, interpretation program. So if that could be explained again, that would be beneficial. Stu? I think Stu's queuing it up, I believe. Yep. Give me a sec there, bud. I am Absolutely. just getting it ready and I'll uh, pop it up here. And a reminder, everybody, to speak slowly. There we go. So again, follow the and steps on the page. Click on the interpretation icon. And anybody in English um, and Spanish can watch us and follow us along on the Mona County Health Department Facebook page. All right, thank you, Stu. Thank you. Why don't we move on to our next question? Could you please discuss how the vaccination distribution process will go in our county? Sure. Um, so the initial phase of vaccine distribution, which is called 1A, uh, will be for primarily healthcare providers and um, skilled nursing facilities, which we do not have any of in our county. So the doses we receive initially will primarily go to healthcare providers. And then as additional doses become available and are shipped to us, we will increasingly open to uh, broadening communities. Um, initially, it'll be you know, most at risk individuals and essential, essential businesses, EMTs, firefighters. Um, and then really for the majority of the population who are not at high risk, that will most likely start in spring as far as getting those individuals vaccinated. Okay, can we have our next question? Brian, can I just add me to that before you? Absolutely. I'd just like to remind everybody that you know, we're all obviously very hopeful that the vaccine is going to do what we want it to do. That does not mean that if you get the vaccine, you can relax all of the other precautions we've talked about skiing, distancing, washing, um, not gathering, not doing unnecessary travel, all going to be essential things that have to continue in order to prevent this pandemic from continuing. The whole goal of the vaccine is going to be another tool in our arsenal to try to prevent the pandemic and hopefully get it to stop and, and just back to a more normal existence and, and quality of life. But it is not a trade one for the other. And, and again, as people understand that, getting shot does not substitute, now I don't have to wear a mask anymore. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be wearing masks for a while still. All right, let's have our next question. Can you clarify, does lodging need to close based on the travel order? Is lodging open now with strict restrictions or closed? And if we go into a regional order, when you say lodging, does that include short-term rentals? Dan? Yeah, thank you, Brian. This is Dan all over the town. Uh, the lodging uh, currently in the town of Mammoth Lakes, it is open with some restrictions in terms of uh, total capacity, uh, what they can operate at is 70%. Uh, there is no restriction in the county uh, area for Mono County outside of the town. Uh, the travel order does not require lodging to be closed. Uh, it doesn't address that element. The uh, stay at home order, if, uh, if, if we end up in that uh, uh, position, then yes, lodging would be allowed to be open, but only to serve uh, essential workers. So, uh, and it would apply to all lodging, whether it's short-term rental or hotel motel operations. So under the uh, stay at home order, severely limited, it'd be open, but for a very limited uh, clientele, very similar to where we were at back in uh, the early part of the pandemic. 
So it would have an impact at that point. Thank you, Dan. Go ahead, Rob. Yeah, I'd like to just add on to that. Um, one of the, when Dan referenced uh, the essential travelers, um, there is a very strict, you know, process from the town by which we, we sort of approve for those. I mean, they're not just, everybody gets, uh, gets a pass on that. It's, if someone has any rental or activity, then it needs to be documented with a form that we we're aware of. Uh, so it's pretty, it's pretty strict. Um, this, the second thing I'd like to say is we also see during that time frame that um, while people who own homes up here, uh, second homes, probably shouldn't be traveling uh, based upon the order, um, they're not prohibited from, from using their, uh, their home. So a lot of calls we get within the enforcement activity is, is calling on people that are actually here uh, at their own homes. So kind of be aware of that, um, that that's out there, but, but really for the lodging community, just know that there's a strict procedure with um, essential workers and please contact us uh, if you have questions about that. Thank you very much, Rob. Why don't we go to our next question? I think uh, there you go. Thought Dr. Burroughs, sorry. Can Dr. Burroughs speak on the current state of our hospital and how many COVID patients are currently in ICU? I'll hit Dr. Burroughs. So I could speak very generally about that. I really can't speak specifically because that's uh, violating patient privacy. Uh, I will tell you that we have definitely seen admissions to the hospital. Um, we have had a number of people that have been admitted and for the most part discharged. Uh, over the last several weeks, we've had uh, a couple of people that have actually had to transfer to an outside facility and fortunately they're doing okay. Uh, some of the limitations we have here, we can't do anything about, which is frankly the altitude. Um, uh, a, a respiratory illness as potentially serious as COVID is people are not going to do as well 8,000 feet as they are at sea level or any really anything lower. Um, currently, and for going back quite a stretch now, we have not had any ICU admissions to the, uh, to the hospital, but we have... Uh, continue to operate with a, what we call a COVID ward and the philosophy of being a COVID capable hospital. What that means is that we are in a position where we can take care of all patients coming regardless of what their need may be. So whether you have a surgical problem, another medical condition, or you have COVID, we have designated areas and staff and resources and the capability to take care of any and all of those things. Right now, we are not impacted to the point where we feel like we are compromising care for anyone, regardless of what they come to the hospital for. That's why we are currently in a green status. Um, if we were to move into a position of what we define as a yellow status, that generally means that we now feel like we have some impact that's going to potentially make it more difficult for us to take care of, again, anybody whether they have COVID or otherwise. Red, that's the most concerning color code that we have. That would now be a situation where we absolutely are compromising our ability to take care of somebody because our resources are, or our personnel or whatever are now exhausted to the point that we can safely take care of anyone under any circumstance. But just to leave everyone with the, the final part of that answer. We are very much green right now. And, and Dr. Burroughs, are you able to um, speak to our transferring hospitals and how their caseloads are? Uh, I can, uh, early on in the pandemic, we were doing daily updates with our uh, referring facilities, particularly in uh, Nevada, which would have been renowned medical center, Carson Tahoe and St. Mary's as the probably the three primary destinations. Uh, notoriously, we've always had more difficulty with Southern California. Some of that has to do with the need to transfer to the closest facility. Uh, so it, it makes a lot of the Southern California areas more difficult. Uh, I can tell you generally at this point, most of the hospitals that I just mentioned are much more impacted than Mono County is. And they've got their hands full with what they're taking care of COVID wise. 
If we do need to transfer someone, it is on a case-by-case -case basis. It requires a conversation between hospital personnel on the Mammoth Hospital side and wherever the receiving facility is to get that person transferred. So I, I wish I could give you a more specific answer and tell you absolutely they'll take anyone and everyone. Uh, we have set up our system to be able to take care of anyone regardless of their condition, at least up front. And we have to operate with the idea that we're going to be taking care of that person for the duration of their hospitalization. Thank you, Dr. Burroughs. I believe Dr. Boo wants to make a comment and then Chief Revolt wants to make a comment. Yeah, um, thank, thank you, Dr. Burroughs. Thank you, Brian. Um, I just wanted to um, add that, you know, you know so with the, with the original stay-at-home order, um, when the pandemic was surging in California, the state basically ordered all hospitals to stop doing elective procedures and surgeries and things like that and, and really kind of hunker down and be ready for, for COVID cases. And um, it's my understanding um, consistently for, for some months that the state does not intend to, to do that on, on any kind of a, you know, a sweeping statewide basis. And, and we'll leave it up to um, individual hospitals to, to determine how to operate. So just thought I'd add that. Thank you, Dr. Boo. Go ahead, Chief Revolt. Uh, just quickly, two items to add. Uh, it's kind of some situational awareness. I, I keep in touch with some of the other EOCs in the region. Um, give you an idea of what's kind of happened north of us in terms of just cases. Um, in the last three days, they went from uh, 288 new cases. The day after that, they went to 401 new cases. And as of today, they went to 628 new cases. Um, we're, it, it's natural when we get these new guidelines or we're, we're you know, uh, trying to pass along uh, guidance from the state on actions they're taking to slow the rate of spread. And, and we get into the details. Um, and I'm sure a lot of the questions we have waiting are going to be you know, kind of detail oriented. How does it apply to me? And I understand that. But kind of like a few months ago, we talked about um, some point our focus needs to be on, uh, we do need to digest what the guidance means, but in the simplest terms, it's the same basic things of, of distance, wash, cover. There's a vaccine in the future, but it's not gonna happen fast enough to change our trajectory. Um, these mitigations we're talking about are absolutely necessary uh, because of the rate of rise. And remember, the whole goal is it's going to move through the communities, but we need it to move at a rate slow enough to where we don't have to ration care, as Dr. Burroughs said. So the concern is with these ICU capacities, um, the numbers are mounting, the ICUs are getting uh, swamped, and, and then you just have to start rationing care. So um, I know it's not popular, I know it's not fun, uh, but it is very real. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. All right, why don't we uh, move on to our next question, please. Can you, is it a question of if we go into the regional stay at home order, the state site is stating that we Mono County are going into a regional stay and this will take place in 48 hours. Can you clarify the timing? Dr. Boo, are you able to address that? Yeah, no, I, I certainly haven't. Um seen anything like that um, um, on, on the state side or, or, or heard that we are projected to reach the 15% threshold as a region. Um, yeah, basically um, in early December and, 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 you know, maybe within days, as I mentioned before. So I think it's still an if, but, but um, it, it's, it's probably much more likely than not. Dr. Boo. And if I may, I think the 48 hour element comes in is uh, if and when we end up uh, in that position, we have 48 hours to implement uh, the uh, restrictions that are imposed for effective time frame. Thank you, Dan. Why don't we go ahead and move on to our next question. In the summer, the hospital discussed using a tent for overflow. Is that still the plan or will we use a community center, high school gym, 
Um, since the local marine base has a medical facility, could this be used to, for county COVID patients? Go ahead, Dr. Burrows. Yeah, so we have, since the beginning of this pandemic, had a contingency plan built in to expand our capacity from what we normally have, which is a total of 17 beds as a critical access hospital to, and I'm gonna use the word loosely, comfortably 40 patients, which would include 10 ICU patients uh, and then 30 additional patients. If we had to go beyond that to say 60, we actually have um, a space contingency plan for that as well. We even have one to go upwards as high as 80. Uh, I am not saying that we wanna see that happen, but that is the plan that we have in place on how we would handle an excessive overflow. All right, thank you, Dr. Burroughs. Um, just want to step back to the last question. Is it 48 hours to implement or is it 24 hours to implement the, the stay at home? I'm actually not sure. It, it, on the website, it was saying 48 hours. Uh, so. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's take our next question then. Brian, we have some call-in questions. Sure. Um, our first one is from Don Sparks. Don, are you there? Can you unmute yourself? Evening, Don. Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I must have hit something I, I hadn't intended to call in. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, though, Don. Okay, Lauren. Um, we have another call in from Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Are you there, Galaxy? If you're there, you're on mute. All right, moving on. Is there something that we can do about cleaning shopping carts at grocery outlet and bonds? Go ahead, Rob. Yeah, um, so I've had a couple of conversations with uh, bonds folks on what their protocols are for cleaning and for, for posting someone at the front door for masking. Um, right before Thanksgiving, uh, they, they definitely had somebody out there and, and my last time in the office, which was Wednesday morning, um, there was somebody out in front and, and they were sitting in those, those corrals, cleaning the carts and checking for masks. Um, that is a company policy. I hadn't really seen it prior to, uh, you know, the time I gave a call to uh, some folks at the, at the regional office, but uh, that's what's happening. Um, so I think a pretty good uh, effort is being made. I haven't seen the same uh, issues going on at Grocery Outlet, um, but I, I wanna kind of remind folks that we have a very robust um, team that's out really doing checks and, and following up on complaints that are received um, and, and really strong team and it's code compliance and, uh, and their email address is code compliance at the town of Mammoth Lakes .ca .gov. Um, and they, they can be, uh, and we'll post that up, Steve, you can post that somewhere where folks can see it, uh, as well as the phone number. We, we deal with things uh, all day long. So uh, please send that in to us and we'll check it out. What we'll do is go to the store, we'll observe for ourselves, have a conversation. If it doesn't get rectified, we'll start writing citations uh, until it gets corrected. So it's, we, we have conversations, but, um, but sometimes they have to go a little bit further. So but thank you for the question. Thank you very much, Rob. Move on to our next question. Is camping allowed on public lands? Ooh, who would like to handle the public land question? There we go. I'll take it. Uh, as far as I understand, yes, dispersed camping is still allowed. The seasonal campgrounds are closed because they are no longer seasonal. 
but we have passed through our fire season. We are no longer in fire restrictions and dispersed camping is allowed. Thank you very much, Sheriff Braun. We have our next question. With the tighter restrictions, does this affect shuttle service to access Mammoth Resort from remote parking and the Mammoth Transit from, sorry, from Mammoth Transit from the town? Uh, let's see. Uh, Dan, do you have, is Dan still on? Uh, I, I, I don't think it would directly affect it. Dan, any comments on, on the transit in town? Yeah, the transit uh, is continuing to run. Uh, and if uh, Mammoth Mountain is uh, open and operating, it would continue to provide uh, transportation uh, accordingly, uh, as well as for employees and other uh, visitors to the community. Thank you, Dan, and thank you, Dr. Boo. Why don't we take our next question? Can you clarify restaurants? Are they allowed to have outside service at this time, as well as for delivery and to go? Yes, this is Tom Boo. Yes, yes they are. Um, if we do move into a regional stay-at-home order, the outdoor dining component would be prohibited. But at this time in the purple tier, it's only indoor dining that is prohibited. Thank you, Dr. Boo. Let's take our next question. When will Mammoth Resorts be back on this panel to ask questions? Go uh, ahead, Dan. Yeah, uh, we, we have discussions with Mammoth Mountain, uh, Mammoth Resorts uh, staff on a regular basis. Uh, depending on timing and availability of their staff, they had a, I know, a leadership team meeting this afternoon, evening. Uh, most of their uh, key staff were all committed to that. They were doing the same follow-up uh, that we're doing, I believe, and looking at not just uh, Mammoth Resorts uh, component, but uh, the other, you know, obviously Mammoth Mountain, but June Mountain, Big Bear, there are other properties here in the state. So at that point, uh, nobody was really available to be on the call at that point. Plus, again, the same questions, uh, they're, they're getting this information the same way we are and uh, are digesting it no different than uh, we're doing on the calls this evening. Thank you very much, Dan. Can we have our next question? Would the mountains stay open if local lodging is closed? Uh, again, that would be a call for uh, Mammoth uh, Mountain Mammoth Resorts to make. Uh, they can, they obviously can, they can stay open and run the ski uh, ski uh, operations. Uh, it's matter of uh, economics and uh, viability that way from locals, from people who can do a day drive, uh, not needing lodging. The other obvious thing we have in Mammoth is a number of second homeowners and others who uh, would come, you know, stay here for a period of time. Uh, they could do that. I think it's, it's a business decision then ultimately whether or not uh, they continue to run the resort uh, and, and have, keep it open at that point. So that would be a decision they would need to look at and make uh, as, we, as we get into the future. Thank you, Dan. Let's take our next question. Will the BLM and Forest Service be closing lands and parks again with a regional shutdown? Go ahead, Ingrid. So I can't answer that question, but I figure I'm the best person to not answer that question. We don't, <laughs> they, there's been no uh, statement by them saying that they're going to do that. We haven't had any indication of such, but um, that's a big, I don't know. All right, thank you for that non-answer, Sheriff Braun. <laughs> uh, can we move on to our next question? Can you explain why are we lumped in with Southern California region and what our representatives are doing to adjudicate our status? Chief Revolt, can you uh, address that question? Yeah, I'll take the first half and then uh, um, Dr. Boo may have some things to answer. Uh, as well. Um, so the Cal California Office of Emergency Services um, has several ways that they uh, divide up in the state and they, and they use those for some pretty complex things that are, have been very well established for years. 
Um, the, the regions that uh, were defined in, um, they, they use those same regions for um, distribution of items, for um, uh, coordination of, of public health and, and uh, other services in those regions. Uh, this is, those are pretty established lines when you're talking about a large bureaucracy trying to manage um, some complicated policies. Um, and I think it's also maybe related to um, distribution of vaccines. Um, I'm, I'm less certain about that part. Uh, but I think there is uh, little to no chance of finding a way to carve ourselves out of uh, that region. Um, that's my honest answer. I don't think there's going to be an opportunity for that. And um, as far as the adjudication part, I'm not sure what we would be filing an adjudication for, Dr. Boo. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the caller was was perhaps asking about, um, you know, an, an appeal of the regional grouping. Um, not not sure, not sure. But but again, right. I, I I'm pessimistic about the state's willingness to to change in the next three weeks or you know. In, in the medium term. Yeah, I agree, Dr. Boo, I agree. Why don't we, uh, go ahead, Chief. I just say real quick, um, look at it in the inverse. We were, we were, if the state was satisfied to leave us working at a county level, which is exactly what we've been doing, county by county analysis, um, once nearly all of the counties went to purple, they realized that, you know, county by county approach wasn't, um, wasn't slowing down or stopping the spread. So. Um, I think they felt the need to take the regional approach because they've got to make some pretty wide policy decisions to bend the curve. Thank you, Chief. Okay, why don't we take our next question? Can you explain the increase in cases locally? I thought all the cases were from the military base. No, not at all. The cases are from most communities at this point. Uh, the virus is pretty well disseminated in not only Mono County, but Inyo County and many other counties, um, as is indicated by, I think, what, 90 some percent of the residents of California are in the purple tier, I believe. It's more than that, like 99 or something like that. It's something very high. I know that. So you know, the virus is here. It's it's not a military thing. Um, that was kind of an outlier that was contained, you know, on the base. But beyond that, we are definitely having community spread. It's really everywhere um, right now. The, the risk is much higher than at any time we, we've seen in this pandemic. So um, we would ask everyone to be um, very careful and take this very seriously right now. Indeed. Thank you, Dr. Boo. Go ahead, Dr. Ross. I can only tell you that my, my experience with this is you have really got to assume that everyone you're coming in contact with is potentially infected. And that is not just a catchphrase anymore. That's just the reality. That's what we're seeing. We're seeing it in patients. If a patient's sick, that means their family's sick. Uh, so, you know, one or two cases translates into 15 positive cases easily. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Burroughs. Why don't we move on to our next question? So what is the current belief on how this virus is being spread? People gathering in their homes? It's really a combination of, of items. First, you know, it's, it's colder weather, which viruses tend to thrive in a little better. People are moving indoors more for activities. Gatherings, people are having gatherings, you know, Thanksgiving being one that we just had. People are more mobile, they're, they're traveling. And also to some extent, there's, there's you know, COVID fatigue. Um, a lot of people are just, you know, just tired of COVID. Um, would anyone else on the panel like to add to that or? It is a highly contagious virus. There is really no other explanation needed. Um, if you come in contact with someone that's infected, it is, overwhelmingly likely that you're going to get infected as well. That's been the problem. And I think as everyone has talked about tonight and in previous meetings, there's absolutely a fatigue part where we kind of rode through the storm in March and April. It settled down, the summer seemed like we were okay. Then it peaked up a little bit. 
we got back under control and now we're, we're seeing the impact of the fact the virus has not taken a break. It is still highly contagious. Um, and if you don't take the precautions of masking and distancing, it's almost a given that you're going to catch it for someone that's infected. It's just yeah. the way it is. Yeah, thank, thanks everybody. And, 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 and let me just remind people that the current understanding uh, you know, of, of the evidence and the transmission is that um, about half the people who spread the virus don't have symptoms, don't know they're sick. So, you know, we're, we're used to, you know, being careful with, you know, people who are coughing and sneezing and, you know, sick, but with this virus, you have to be careful with everybody, anybody, your, your, your best friend, you know, um, you know, you're, you're the person you work with every day at work. Um, that person could have, you know, caught the virus, you know, a few days ago and could be infectious. So you just have to have to, you know, be diligent about the, you know, all, all the stuff we're, you know, always harping on the, you know, wearing your mask and keeping your distance and washing your hands and yeah. And, yeah. Right. And, and also remember if you test and you test negative, that only means you were negative when that test was taken. It does not mean that two days later or five hours later, you won't, you know, be positive. So keep that in mind as well. A negative test is not a free pass. All right, let's move on to our next question. Can Vaughn start monitoring and limiting the amount of guests coming in? Only a few guests out of the groups we are seeing rather than large groups coming in altogether. Go ahead, Rob. Yeah, so under the purple tier, um, even grocery stores are allowed only 50% of capacity for Vaughn's. Uh, their total capacity is 180, so that would be about 90 people at any one time. Uh, and speaking with the management group um, on Wednesday, they, they have a specific plan with which they're going to start the monitoring process um, and be able to, you know, have to, have to limit it to only 90 people in the store at any one time. Now, with regard to the number of people, I think within a family was the question. Um, I didn't get a sense that there was an, an intent to do that, but if you think about the economics of you know, limiting the, uh, the number of people that are going into the establishment, which is required now, uh, that should be a natural follow along. Um, we did talk about potentially adding, you know, some of our community outreach programs out front uh, to talk to folks. There's definitely a, a campaign uh, with MLT in the, the poster marketing that talks about only sending one of your family members in, um, but it definitely remains a challenge. And I think it will be addressed by bonds when, when the limitations um, are start, started to hit and they have to make uh, some financial decisions for themselves. Thank you, Rob. Well, it is almost 6.30, but um, I know a lot of people still have questions and there are still some questions in our queue. I just want to check with the panelists to see if everyone's okay with staying on a little longer so we could get through these questions. We okay there? All right, well then let's plow ahead. Can we have our next question? I reported to the hotline code compliance for rentals, several witnessed over renting situations and gatherings. Many companies are renting to large groups with five and six vehicles and far greater than 10 people. Can you discuss the enforcement? Go ahead, Rob. Yeah, so um, what we do, we follow up on that. Uh, there's, a, there's a multitude of things that we're currently um, looking for. Right now it is, uh, people who are, are not adhering to the 24-hour gap between rentals, um, we do get that's by, by and large the most uh, complaints that we receive. And so we will um, pull their rental calendars and review that as, a, as, a, as an audit. Um, they will be charged $200 for every occurrence. And, and uh, the next time they get audited, it'll go up to $500 per occurrence. So it's pretty steep. Uh, with regard to calling out to, uh, we've had calls for saying, you know, people are out here that when they don't belong or, or other, there's too many cars in the parking lot. And it, sometimes it's family members. Sometimes it's, uh, it's really difficult to tell, but we follow up on it. Um, and unfortunately though, there isn't a feedback loop that says, here's the activity that we took um, with regard to the call in and here's the information that we found and here's what, what the results are. So a lot of times um, call it in, we'll, we'll check it out. If it's something we've checked out before, meaning the same people, uh, we may tell you at that point, and if you're the caller, you know, here's what we found last time, just to give a sense of that. But 
We are very interested in making sure that the bad operators are stopped and uh, we support those that are following the rules, following the guidelines and the restrictions that are there um, and, and just keeping those on. So it's very, very much in our best interest to, to follow up on these and we do uh, as they come in. Thanks, Rob. Why don't we take our next question? Just wondering where we are locally with beds available and ventilators. Also, if we do get very sick, are the hospitals in Reno slash Southern California still available to take patients? Well, I'll turn that over to Dr. Burroughs, but I think we did address most of that, but go ahead, Dr. Burroughs. We did, but just to refresh anyone that either didn't hear it or is tuning in uh, later, the hospital status right now is green, which means we have complete capacity to take care of anyone and everyone that comes in with whatever condition they have that needs to be treated. We have the potential to be able to treat upwards of 10 intensive care unit patients, which means we could ventilate all 10 of them if we had to. Um, transferring out of our area is on a case by case basis. And that's because all of our transfer centers are much bigger centers than we are. Um, they are much more impacted by this right now on a caseload than, than we are. Uh, and that is definitely going to limit our ability. That being said, we are in a position right now where we will take care of a patient assuming that we're going to have to take care of them for the duration of their hospitalization. Thank you, Dr. Burroughs. Do we have any more phone-in calls? Phone-in questions, I should say. We do. Uh, one phone and caller, James Sanford. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Mr. Sanford. Thanks. Actually, this is my wife's question. So, Jean? <laughs> I just wanted to know if the EMTs are included in the first wave of the vaccine or not. EMTs are actually in... 1B in theory um, as part of, a, of the essential workforce, um, but certainly depending on the amount of vaccine that we do get, um, you know, we do have some ability to make some decisions on our own, but officially they're a part of 1B as far as um, getting vaccinated. All right, why don't we take another question? Can Dr. Blue please address what his strategy is towards lodging restrictions in the short term? Thank you. Go ahead, Dr. Boo. Yeah, um, we're actively discussing that. Um, no, no decisions made. Um, if uh, if the state imposes um, you know draconian restrictions you know in, in the very near future, I don't think it'll be necessary for us to take local action. But uh, it, it is a um, it is a real concern, and, and, and if and if we don't see um, impending state action that will apply to us, um, we, we we will do something. Thank you, Dr. Boo. Next question, please. When we have new cases, are they people just testing positive or are they people actually showing symptoms? Also, when you say cases, are you talking about positive tests, asymptomatic, or are you saying that are people in the hospital? Brian, should I take this one? Go ahead, Dr. Boo. Sure. Hey, so, um, you know, it's a, it's a great question. So, so cases actually um, refer to positive uh, PCR tests, you know, the, the polymerase chain reaction test that, uh, um, are mainly done, you know, by out of town labs. Um, the, the hospital does have a good PCR test, but they've had very limited supplies. Um, and it brings up an important point because um, we're also we're also using um, rapid tests now um, in, in symptomatic people and, and, and seeing quite a few people who are positive by rapid tests and they don't actually count as official cases. I don't know if we're if we're yet representing those on our on our website. Um, um, but we, we, we do intend to soon, you know, sort of like cases and, and, and then what we'll call probable cases or, 
you know, and then explain that, that those are, um, you know, um, people who are tested by antigen tests, which are, which are, you know, um, that's the formal term for what a lot, a lot of people say are rapid tests. Um, but, but, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a whole range. I mean, of, of, of some people are, are, are asymptomatic, no symptoms. Other people have mild symptoms. Other, other people are, um, sick enough to be hospitalized. It, it's the complete range that we're seeing right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Dr. Lee. All right. Let's take our next question. If Mammoth Mountain stays open during the regional stay at home order and lodging, including short term lodging, is shut down, where will visitors stay? Well, the, the, the idea is there, there, there's not supposed to be visitors coming for, for recreational purposes, only for um, what they call critical infrastructure purposes. That, that's the whole idea of the, of the regional stay at home order. Dan, did you want to add to that? I saw you turn your mic off. No, the, the only other option people would have is if they're actually staying with friends or family here and those types of elements or they own a home. But as Dr. Boo noted, the whole goal is to have people not traveling here to not have those lodging properties available for those purposes. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dr. Boo. Let's move on to our next question. I noticed that soldiers from the military base are at the mountain riding the chairlift every morning. Isn't there an outbreak at the base? What precautions are being taken with the soldiers who are all over the mountain? Can you reread that question for me one more time? I'm sorry. No worries. I noticed that soldiers from the military base are at the mountain riding the chairlift every morning. Isn't there an outbreak at the base? What precautions are being taken with the soldiers who are skiing at Mammoth Mountain? All right, thank you. So there was an outbreak at the base um, that has since been uh, taken care of. Those were mostly soldiers that were brought in for training. They were not from here. And um, after their quarantine and isolation periods, uh, they went back to their, their their bases, which were on the East Coast. So currently there, there's no outbreak at the military base. And, you know, they are, they are taking probably more precautions than they were taking before, um, but they have good precautions in place anyway. Um, and they don't have, I believe, another group coming in until sometime in January for training. So currently no outbreak on the mountain. It's fine that they're out there. Um, if I could add to- um... Sure. The, uh, the precautions and the procedures they've taken for the people that are remaining at the base um, are solid enough that uh, uh, we felt comfortable um, accepting their gracious help uh, during the Mountain View fire yeah. in the recovery process. To, we were short on some, uh, some CERT members uh, and they did a wonderful job helping us uh, get things going. So um, they're... Yeah. Uh, they're in good shape now. They they did have an outbreak, and that's been resolved. Thank, thanks, Frank. And and and, and I would just add that um, um, there are presumably on a busy day lots of people at the mountain who are infected and, and don't know it or have mild symptoms and and, and choose not to uh, deal with it. Um, so it's a mistake to focus on 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 people in uniform. That being said. Um, we think that the uh, the procedures, the you know the protocols in place at the mountain are, are are pretty good for for reducing risk and you know outdoor activity or whatnot. But again, um, don't don't focus on on people that you you think are um, the risky ones because it's all around us right now. Thank you, Dr. Boo. Why don't we move on to our next question? I keep hearing complaints in town that police decline to enforce masking. Can you explain this policy? Chief Davis, can you field that question for us? Can you repeat the question? I was actually reading an email. <laughs> I keep hearing complaints in town that the police decline to enforce masking. Can you explain this? 
Uh, we actually just like uh, we've, we've all same as always before that we have a complaint, then we're going to contact and talk to the people. But I can't remember the last time we've actually had a call of a complaint, uh, somebody not masking that we've responded to. Um, but uh, we will go out and deal with them, ask them to uh, go ahead and comply, put the mask on. If they refuse, then there's other alternative things that um, we can uh, deal with that way. But uh, again, I as much as I'm around town, I'm not seeing people not uh, wearing masks. So it seems like a moot point. Um, question? Yeah. He looks frozen. Yeah, he does. Uh, um, who will be distributing the vaccine when the county has it? Just the county or pharmacies also? Dr. Boo, do you know the answer to that or Craig? Yeah, you know, so so um, in, the, in this first phase, you know, so, so California is expecting to, to get its first vaccine from Pfizer um, followed shortly by the Moderna vaccine. Um, in mid month, I mean, I heard December fifteenth. <laughs> sorry, December fifteenth on a on a call today, and 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 and, and these you know um, initial very limited doses will be um, only only handled and administered by um, public health and Mammoth Hospital. Um, Toyabi, I think, um, will will get their own um, vaccines through through separate federal channels. That being said, as as, as more vaccine is produced and is coming to California, I, I think. Um, Pharmacies will be involved in, in administering the, the vaccine and helping to get it into the public that, that needs it. I want to go back, if I may, and answer <clears throat> and, and address that question just before about the masking. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about procedures and, and things that <clears throat> our businesses have become very good uh, with this approach. Um, they, they will address uh, someone without a mask in their establishment by asking them to put a mask on first off and our ambassador team does supply masks and other things to businesses to support that. But then they'll also, um, if they refuse to do that, they'll ask them to leave. At that point, um, it's, it's a call to the PD for a trespassing um, uh, call, if you will, which is a little bit more legal backing uh, in the approach with what PD can, can do for that. So, um, that's, that's kind of the approach that people use. They ask them to comply by handing them a mask. If they refuse, they ask them to leave. If they refuse to leave, then they, they can call the PD with, uh, with a trespassing call. Thanks, Rob. Sorry about that. I lost internet connection, but I'm back now. So why don't we go to our next question? Can you explain the difference between the shelter in place order in the purple tier and the regional limited stay or the regional limited stay at home order. Uh, Dr. Boo, are you able to field that question? Yeah, sure, Brian. So, um, so, so just to clarify, it's, it's a difference between where we are now purple tier and, and what the changes will be with the regional um, stay at home order. Was that the question? Correct. I, I guess there is an email that yeah. went out saying that we will have a shelter in place order by Saturday. Yeah. So again, that, that, you know, um, that's, that's an if it's, you know, it's probably going to happen to us soon. Don't know when, um, but um, the, the additional restrictions um, associated with the, with the regional stay at home order would, would be the lodging stuff that we already talked about. There would be um, a, a prohibition on, on non-essential lodging, um, everybody would be um, expected to to stay at home except for um, you know um, permissible purposes. Restaurants could no longer do outdoor dining. Um, you know, right now retail can do um, what 25% for you know for non-grocery stores and non-pharmacies, and 50% for for grocery stores and pharmacies, and and all retail stores, you know, regardless of type would be down to 20%. Um, right now, um, people are, are permitted to, you know, cut hair and, 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 and um, do other personal services. Um, that would be prohibited um, with the regional stay at home order. Right now, um, um, religious services, church services are permitted. Um, I 
50 or 25 percent capacity indoors. There would be no indoor services permitted. So there were, it would be very significant changes and, and no gatherings um, whatsoever with people outside, outside our household. Thank you, Dr. Boo. We have time for one more question. So let's get to that last question. Does Dr. Boo expect a possible ICU bed overload after New Year's in Mammoth? Dr. Boo, Dr. Burroughs? I, I, I could defer to Craig. I mean, um, I, I believe these stay at home orders, I mean, it, it worked incredibly well in the spring. I mean, you know, I, I was. I was extremely worried about you know where things were were, um, were heading in in, um, in March when, when when the original um, stay at home order in California was imposed, and um, things settled down um, much much quicker and, 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 and more completely than than I than I might have expected. So I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that if we if we if we are facing a regional stay at home order that it that it um, yeah um, heads off um, that kind of crisis. Craig? Yeah, I'm going to cross my fingers as well, like Dr. Booth said, and uh, remind everyone again, we are a critical access hospital. Our overflow plan is for 10 ICU beds, and that's it. And those are now makeshift ICU beds beyond what we currently have, which is two. So yes, we can do it. We have the plan in place to do it and support patients. But again, if you get to that point, you are realistically looking at a situation where transferring anywhere is not going to happen because the entire state and Nevada are all going to be inundated as well. So uh, I, I can't emphasize enough, and I assure everyone on the panel would agree, we can't take this lightly with respect to the idea of, you know, shelter in place, stay at home, don't gather, uh, do what you can to, to keep yourself safe, stay in your bubble, stay healthy. Don't let the virus just run like wildfire because we're seeing what's happening right now. And uh, it's going to result in a lot of people getting sick and, and unfortunately a lot of people dying as a result of not only the virus, but just the inability to have the resources to take care of them. Thank you, Dr. Burroughs. I believe Chief Freebolt, you wanted to uh, add to this? Yeah, just a, just a closing comment here that uh, um, there's actually no luck involved in this. Um, and with the restrictions and mobility, uh, our, our fate's completely in our hands here. It, it's our ability to show um, the distance, wash, cover, basics, and limited mobility in our community. That's that's how we stop this thing and buy ourselves some time until the vaccine can get here. So I know that's not exciting. It's no, not, that's not exciting. It's not is what we can do and that's in our, that's in our control. And, you, and we've shown an ability to do it. We can finish this off. Thank you, Chief. That's all the time we have tonight. So until our next call, take care of yourselves and each other. Good night, Mono County.